you doing? Justin here today. We are checking out Every Breath You Take by The Police, featuring, of course, the incredible Andy Summers on guitar. Uh, I'm going to be taking you through this one just like the record. Uh, if you want the full tab, it's in the uh, pop songbook, so you might want to check that out. Uh, there are a few kind of minor variations that you might pick up on if you really want to play it exactly like the record. Uh, we did tab out all of those ones, but I'm going to have to simplify it a little bit for the lesson just to go through every minute I would take uh, forever and kind of miss the point. Uh, the point is to play the tune. And uh, one of the interesting things about this song is uh, if you look at the tab for it, it looks really, really difficult. And I remember seeing a tab for this when I was a teenager and uh, giving up because that first chord looked like I had to do this with, you know, like a regular A bar chord and then stretch my little finger right up two frets. And I just, I can't sustain that chord for very long. It really hurts my hand. And uh, just by chance, I happened to catch a video of uh, the police playing it live. And uh, I noticed that Andy was doing it a slightly different way, moving his first finger. And it meant that I could play the tune because before that I had no hope really. I've only got a stumpy little finger anyway. So uh, that's one of the things about this tune that can be, once you know that little trick, it makes it a lot more accessible to play. Although it does still require a little bit of uh, finger stretching. Um, Nearly all of the way through it follows a very similar picking pattern. Uh, so I just want to talk about that before we get into the chords. Uh, I'm going to be using all down picks and uh, making sure that I've got a bit of palm mute on, right? So if I played it with, without any palm mute... It doesn't really sound much like the recording. So what you want is that outside part of your hand just sitting on the edge of the string. So instead of get a lot kind of a muted note, you know, it's called palm mute for a reason. And you need to experiment a bit about exactly how far you put it up and how hard you press because it's impossible for me to quantify that really. So what you want to do is just put, it, put your hand on the bridge, start playing, and then just move it up closer toward the neck. Experiment with how much pressure you've put down and as well the, exactly the position of it because both of those kind of variables are important there. So that's one thing that you want to check out. I'll go through the picking pattern a little bit uh, when we've looked at the chords uh, more or as we look at the chords. Um, so uh, let's get to a close up, see how to do it. Okay, so that's the first kind of part of the riff. Uh, I've taken the delay and the chorus off just to help with uh, clarifying what we're doing here because the echoes at slower volume, uh, slower speed sound a little bit weird. So uh, that first chord, originally if you kind of look at a tab or whatever, it looks like it's an A bar chord at the fifth fret with a little finger stretched up two frets. <laughs> which is kind of possible, but it's pretty hard work and uh, I can't sustain it for that long and uh, it's much better to be doing it the Andy Summers way really. So to do that one, you want to start with the first finger in the fifth fret of the sixth string, stretch out your second finger to the seventh fret of the fifth string, little finger in the ninth fret of the fourth string. Okay, that's the starting position. Five, seven, nine on the thicker strings. And you want to be playing the sixth string, fifth string, fourth string, and back to the fifth string. So the first pattern, okay? Sixth string, fifth string, fourth string, fifth string. And after you've done that, you move your first finger so it moves onto the sixth fret of the third string, and then you're going to pick third string, fourth string, fifth string, fourth string, okay? Third, fourth, fifth, fourth. Again, all down picks. So you put those two together, is six string, five, four, five, shift the first finger, third, fourth, fifth, fourth. Remembering to get that little palm mute there. Okay, and that's the first chord, the A. And I'd recommend you get used to playing that a bit first before you start moving to the other chords. Get used to the picking pattern and the way it feels to kind of move that first finger around. When you're hip with that, you want to try moving it down to the second chord, which is an F sharp minor add nine. This is an A add nine, by the way. Uh, and the F sharp minor 
a little bit stretchy again now. So first finger in the second fret of the sixth string, second finger in the fourth fret of the fifth string, and little finger stretches up to the sixth fret of the fourth string. Same pattern, six, five, four, five. First finger this time moves over to the second fret of the third string. But otherwise it's the same pattern. Again, a lot easier than trying to play that as a whole bar with the little finger. It's kind of possible, but that's, you know, that's really difficult. It's making my wrist hurt just doing it for that little bit, whereas having that little movement there is so much nicer to play, you know. So uh, that would be the second chord. So we're playing that first one for two bars, the A, then down to the F sharp minor. Now we're going to a D sus2, so we're going to a D bar chord here at the 5th fret, so nothing on the thicker string, and then 5, 7, 7. But we're going to stretch up with little finger, so it's at the ninth fret of the 3rd string. Okay, and the pattern here is 5th string, 4th string, 3rd string, back to the 5th uh, string, and then 3rd, 4th, 5th, 4th. So five, four, three, five, three, four, five, four. He sometimes does that pattern slightly different later in the song, but I'm just showing you the intros as exact as I can. Okay, and then it moves up two frets to E sus2. This time the pattern's slightly different. Okay, so we're uh, same kind of idea with a little finger up two frets on the third string. We play fifth string, fourth string, third string twice with the little finger down. Lift the little finger off and play third string, fourth string, fifth string, and then back to the third string. But, excuse me, playing that third string uh, there at the end of that is unusual. It just happens right at the very intro there, but uh, you can hear it quite clearly if you... Uh even a little bit of a gliss off it that you can hear. So uh, that's the main pattern. Let's play it through nice and slowly, starting on the A chord, three, four, to the A. Down to the F sharp minor. To the D. To the E. Back to the A. Vocal comes in, every breath you ace. Just staying on the A. Every move you make. Down to the F sharp minor. Every bond you break. Every step you take. I'll be watching you. And big jump that time down to the F sharp minor. Every single back to A And every word you F sharp minor Every game you D Every night you stay I'll be watching you Whoa! <laughs> it was really difficult to sing this one and play at the same time and I was reading the words and mustered up. Anyway, that was the A. Okay, now we're at the next section where it changes to a D, to a D7. It's just got this little change at the end. So from the D, then D, seven. Okay, it's quite a subtle little change, but it sounds great. The bass moves to the note C, I think, which really emphasizes the D7-ness of that chord. So uh, that little section, fifth string, fourth string, third string, back to the fifth string, the next uh, half of the bar, third string, fourth string, fifth string, fourth string. Then we leave it on the just the regular D, and we play fifth string, fourth string, third string, fifth string, and now we get our D7 going and play, four, which is literally just move the third finger into a point, 
so that we can get the uh, fifth fret of the uh, third string and play the third string, fourth string, fifth string, fourth string. Okay, just that D. Then to A. Now interesting, moves up two frets to B. And then to E. got that kind of pattern slightly different there on the E. So fifth string, fourth string, little finger on the third string, back to fourth string, little finger off, and then third string, fourth string, fifth string, fourth string. Again, five, four, three, four, little finger off, three, four, five, four. Oftentimes I've played it just like that all of the way through, but uh, you can definitely hear clearly on the record the pattern as well. So that's one of those things, you know, you can be as accurate or as easy as, uh, as you want to be. Um, well, it goes through then exactly the same uh, chord sequences again, uh, and then we come to the bridge section. Now the bridge is starting off with an F, big F regular bar chord, okay, with a little down, up, down thing happens there at the beginning. So, since you've gone, I've been lost without a trace to a G. So just moving that shape up two frets. Okay, and then it's going back to F with a... Okay, and when you've got that, it's down, up, and that last down strum is the beat. Down, up, down, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and a one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and a one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and a one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and a one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and back to the riffs again. I hope I've given you enough detail there to get you going, but definitely you want to be listening to the original track as well, because there's little subtle things about the phrasing and the sound that you might want to try and copy. Uh, and speaking of sound, I know some people are going to ask, so I just wanted to talk a little bit about the effects that you might use. I don't think I've kind of nailed the summer sound here, but it's kind of getting there. Uh, just didn't have time to continue mucking about with it, to be honest. Um, there's two kind of key ingredients uh, that he uses a whole lot. One is a tape echo. Uh, like a tape delay, and uh, the other one is a chorus effect. Now, uh, I don't have a tape, a, a tape delay here. I'm using the Strymon El Capistan, which is a tape delay emulator. So uh, if I play now, I think I've got a bit of reverb, probably a bit too much reverb, but uh, you can hear that the, the chord can, kind of continues a little bit. That's just the reverb kind of ringing out. So if I turn the delay on now, you'll hear a series of repeats after the chord's been played. Okay? Okay? And it's set at the tempo. Two, three, four. So the, the delays are kind of happening at the same time. They're in time with what I'm playing. Now, uh, the, the Strymon Capistan uh, pedal that I'm using has got a tap tempo on it, so I can kind of tap a button and it'll uh, match up the tempo there. If you haven't got that feature, you'll just have to experiment with the delays. Um, they're set fairly high. I've, I've got my mix control at about 11 o'clock you know, which is fairly high for a mix control for a delays. You can, they're quite clearly audible, you know, you quite often have them a little bit more subtle than that. So that's the first effect other than the reverb that I've got on. And the other one um, that I've got here is chorus. Now I'll just turn the delays off for a second so you can hear the, hear the difference actually. So here's the chord regular. And now if I turn the chorus on, you can hear it's kind of wobbling, and it's a, it sounds a little bit wobbly for the chords, definitely for the bridge of this song. You don't want to have that heavy chorus on there because it makes it sound a little bit wonky. Um, for this particular uh, session, I'm using the uh, Analog Man by chorus, uh, and I've got the speed set at about 1 o'clock and the depth set at about 12 o'clock. Um, but And you can hear it's, it's kind of wobbly, but especially when you kick it in with the delay now. There's a lot of things going on, you know, but uh, and it doesn't sound so good for strumming the chord, but in context... Oh. Start 
starting to sound pretty close to the original. Not exactly right. I still got to do a bit more tweaking because I wanted to have the depth of my chorus up a little bit more. But then it just sounded really wobbly. And uh, I'm wondering if maybe I need to put the chorus after the delays. I'm still trying to uh, figure that out exactly. But it's you know it's really good fun. And and again the challenge here when you you know trying to get somebody sound, you want to start off with the basic idea. You know a little bit of research on the internet is always a pretty handy thing. You know how does Andy Summers get his sound? And then see what you know. There's interviews with him where he talks it about a bit of specifically the gear he uses and that kind of thing. So uh, that's kind of normally a first port of call for me if I'm trying to nail someone's sound. Um, fi figure out what guitar they use. I believe he was using a Telecaster for those early records, so that's why I've pulled that out. Although I think he was playing a different guitar in the video clip, uh, I can't remember. Uh, but uh, yeah, so a little bit of research, you know, and, and then use your ears. So, uh, you know, I was A being between the two, so I'm listening to a bit of that track and stop and then playing it and trying to, you know, just experimenting, trying the different pickups on the guitar, experimenting with the sound a little bit, different amplifiers if I could, I didn't today, but uh, I'm just using this little uh, fender behind me. But uh, you know, if I'm really going for it, I might try a few different amplifiers as well if I, you know, I'm trying to get the sound really right. So, I uh, hope that helps you with that sound thing as well, because it's, uh, you know, for police stuff, it really makes a, a, a big difference, I think, you know, really trying to get that sound spot on. So, uh, hope you enjoy this lesson, and I'll see you for plenty more very soon. You take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.